Hello and welcome to the introduction of OCP, right? So as I'm sure all of you know, OCP is an incredibly well-known certification and it will definitely get you jobs that you wouldn't possibly be able to get otherwise, especially if you're a beginner. And OCP just has such an insanely good brand name and that is a huge reason as to why it's so valuable, right? There, of course, are great certifications out there as well. HPT SSC great certification. But it does simply just not have the same brand name right, as an OCP. And that is why it's so incredibly valuable. And that is why it's still so sought after. And that is why, even though it's expensive, the price is justified because they know how valuable it actually is, right? So, there are a bunch of certifications out there from OFSEC. But the OCP is the one that we'll be focusing on. And OCP is arguably the most valuable in terms of branding. But of course, they have a lot to teach overall, right? So it's it's really amazing. But OCP is what we'll focus on. Again, so... Will you essentially get the OCP? You can either get the Learn World subscription, and you build annually, and you will get all of this that you can to be press details and you can check out. Or what I would recommend if you just want to get the OCP is that you get the mind today self lab access. And by the way, I see some people jumping straight into the lab access, not having much experience. I do not recommend that to be care. You should definitely do a lot of pre preparation before you jump into the labs because when you see that after 90 days of lab access, you aren't prepared, right? Then you have to spend more money to expand. Or if you try to do the the OCP uh, exam, and when you fail, you have to spend around $250 for another exam be taped. And I really don't want that for you guys. I want you guys to spend as least money as possible and actually succeed, right? So I don't try recommend just jumping straight into your labs. I recommend spending a few months, right? At, depending on how much the level you have. But I would say if you're able to get to do random CGFs that are around easy to medium consistently, not needing help or not needing much help from walkthroughs, I would say then you can start jumping into it. But before then, I don't recommend jumping straight into it just because I don't want you guys to essentially throw money away, right? So yeah, this is what it offers. As you can see, one exam we attempt in mind today is of lab access. And you will get access to the course and the learning resources like the PDF that they have there, right? So... This is another useful link, and by the way, I will throw all of these things in the description as well, just to make it clear and simple for all of you, right? So they have essentially a course out guide, where they will help you through, you can watch this video, they will essentially talk through you with the the learning platform, the, the learning platform that they have, and essentially just explain and go through it, so... And then how to essentially set up the VPN and go through that, so you get access to their internal networks. This is an OCP exam, a fiction, where... There's a bunch of questions that you may have. And also we have a lot of FEQs in our course as well because people are constantly asking me and I'm answering in the Discord. And yeah, people have a lot of different questions, especially surrounding stuff like tools for when I'm better prepared or how do I learn, for instance, Active Directory or just a lot of different things. There's a lot of uncertainty out there, right? Or how do I do reporting? Is this good enough, etc. And for helping each other in the Discord as well, in the VFP section. And we also have the exam time, but... So it goes over the exam structure. You need 70 out of 100 points to pass. And you also have to put initial access, or not initial access, but initial set of credentials uh, on the OCP. The active directory section, so you can get 40 points total. So obviously you have to be really good at uh, acting active directory. And then you can get 60 points total when it comes to standard on machines, right? So these are up machines that are tied into a active directory chain or section or a network or a domain. These are the standalone machines, right? It could be Linux, it could be Windows, so you need always the initial access and you need privilege escalation. They get 20 points per machine, three machines, fixed points, right? So that's why learning privilege escalation for Windows and Linux is important, and initial access for Windows and Linux is important, and learning active directory tags. And again, Windows privilege will come into ADS well like you. And it is very important to not underprepared for any of those sections, right? They are so crucial for how the point system works. Now, there are some general lists out there that I think is quite solid, especially to get you started. It is the NetSec Focus Trophy Room, and it's also the Lenkus and Agile list, right? So, if you're just starting out and you just want to, you aren't sure what machines to start, I would essentially just recommend that you have a balanced approach. So you do some Linux, you do some Windows, and you do some Active Directory. And I would also recommend as well to do some proving grounds as well just because it's the offset that is essentially created a lot of these machines 
and it might give you a little bit of insight as to their general trends. Obviously, I'm not saying that the OCP example look anything like that, right? But it might be useful to essentially have a look there as well, right? So whether you're using the Lenko Sonagi or whether you're using the NetSec Focus, it's a bit uh, personal choice. I would personally recommend Lenko Sonagi between the two. And then, of course, we have the checklist as well that we have inside of the course. And this isn't so much direct rooms you should do. It's more so techniques that you should be prepared for, right? So if you can see in the bottom right here, we have Active Directory, Initial Access, Pivoting, Windows, and Linux Privilege Escalation. And it's essentially different techniques that you need to know how to do, and it covers a lot, right? And then in the notes section right here, I essentially show in the videos exactly when I'm doing a specific technique, so I can actually explain it and show you real time, fully practically, how to essentially do all of these things. And if it's something that I haven't covered yet, I give the best resources that I was able to find, where you can just essentially learn about it, right? So for instance, if you don't know how to essentially attack XXE efficiently, right? Or how you could possibly get an RCE with that, or different LFI attacks, etc. Then there's different resources that I'm either showing directly in the course or elsewhere, right? But yeah, that's going to be in the notes section. And then the status part is the goal, as you can see right here, is to be either basic competence or proficient at all of the different attacks, right? So at the start, I just recommend having all of it as clueless. And as you actually learn how to do a specific attack, you choose accordingly, right? So if you're vaguely familiar with the concept, right? Let's say I know that it's possible for me to use XXE to essentially read local files on a machine, right? But I have absolutely no idea how to actually do the attack or how to identify it. Then I would say vaguely familiar. If let's say I have done the attack once, but I don't feel very confident in always being able to identify that attack surface, but I've kind of done it once and perhaps I have a little bit of notes, but I, I'm really not confident with at all, then basic competence I would put there. Or if this is to something like, yeah, this is easy and like I know how to re realistically do this consistently, then you put it as proficient, right? And the goal is once again to be either basic competence or proficient, but ideally proficient at all of the different things in all of the different, you know, sections in all of the different sections right here. So that's one of the things that we have inside of the course that is very useful. It's more so technique based and it's going to cover most of the techniques out there. And it's really just to make sure that you aren't blind to something because a lot of people that I've heard that fail the OSP, they might have prepared a lot. They might have done a lot of rooms, but they're completely oblivious to a specific attack or they don't know how to do pivoting effectively, right? Or they don't quite know how relaying works. There's a lot of things that you have to be aware of. And obviously I have the OSP myself, but the, the nasty part, I remember myself, it's just having this feeling of like, I don't know what's going to come. How do I prepare if I don't know what's going to come? And this section right here will help a lot with that. And obviously we have the course itself. This introduction will essentially show you how to utilize the course most effectively. Right, so definitely go through that. And then we have essentially a roadmap right here. And the most important parts here are all of these hyperlinks that will take you to different sections of the course that is going to give you the resources that you need and also the and also the action steps that you should do and the resources to do that. And I will highlight the things in the course that is crucial and all of this, right? So these are essentially, once again, just like this one, it's action steps that you should do to best prepare for the OCP. Because the last thing that I want people to be is just kind of like blind and wobbling through things and not having a clear structured approach in terms of how to crush the OCP. So definitely check all of these hyperlinks, right? Cover the exam, the reporting, and all of the different sections, like AD, Privest, Pivoting, Tunneling, and Initial Access, right? So this is going to help a lot. And once again, the introduction will show how to use the course in detail. And we also have the rooms that we recommend so far, right? All of the rooms, and we have structured them in terms of easy, medium, and hard. And this is just some general overview of the, all of the rooms that is covered in the course, right? But it's not just rooms. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of YouTubers doing different walkthroughs, but... I don't just want to give people a walkthrough where I just show how to solve the machine. That's not useful. The only purpose with all of these machines is to give you the methodology. How someone with the OCP thinks, and I will teach you like, okay, this tool is useful. This tool is not. Here's a very useful technique that will save you time. Here's how to stay structured. Here's how to essentially use tools that are allowed and these tools wouldn't be allowed, etc., etc., etc. And just really just explaining everything as I go through how I'm thinking and why I'm doing specific things and... This is like the meat that will help a lot of people because all of this is 100% practical and it's really going to help people 
But yeah, these are just the rooms. This is around 24 hours or so, just in video materials. It's going to help you massively. We also have custom Active Directory chains. And this will continue to come as well in the future as I develop more. But this is something that I noticed was a massive lack in the market, right? There are some chains out there like Volnlab. I think Volnlab is great, but in my opinion, those chains aren't specifically made for the OCP. And the only purpose that I made all of these chains and the reason why I'll make more chains is because the really only chains out there that's useful or very useful for the OCP are the Challenge Lab A, B, and C, right? I definitely recommend you do those. You will get access to them when you join the, the offsec, right? When you get access to their lamps. I highly recommend doing them and I highly recommend checking out these as well because it is just made to get practice with chains, right? Because when you do an active directory machine, like a standalone, you won't be doing stuff like post exploitation or lateral movement or perhaps like relay attacks or tunneling and pivoting. You typically won't be doing those things at all, but they're so important for you to crush the active directory section. So that's why I essentially made sure to create these and just, just focus on OCP because that's what this course is about, right? But yeah, these are the rooms, just for some overview as well. And then again, we have the active directory chains, and I think that's going to be massively useful to you. And I would say that's really all that you need, you know. There's a bunch of different Hofi rooms, like the Netsic Focus and Lenko Sinagi that you can use. And I think they're good, right? But if you want a lot of structure, then I highly recommend that you go through all of this, because you know exactly what to do. My goal is to make sure that I'm proficient at all of this, right? So, I essentially have the introduction that teaches me how to use the roadmap. I just do all the action steps and get all of the resources for AD, for Privesk, for pivoting and tunneling and initial access, and the exam and reporting. So I have no questions. We also have a FAQ in the course, and you also get personal access to me inside of the Discord, where people are constantly asking questions. And it's really just, it's really just amazing, right? So that is really what I have for you today. I hope that you don't feel too intimidated by the OCP. I also get a lot of questions in terms of like, is it okay to jump straight into OCP or do I have to do more beginner certifications first? And my answer is, OCP is extremely doable, right? With the right resources and the right approach and the right mentoring and with the right actions, it is incredibly doable. Even if you have basically no, basically no experience or no beginner pen testing search or anything, or if you completely new to pen testing, I think OCP is 100% doable as your first certification. And yeah, generally, I really think so, okay? But just make sure that when you are starting out, I don't recommend just getting this immediately if you have no experience, because most likely you're gonna have to extend the lamps, especially if you have a job on the side. But yeah, I hope this video was useful and gave you some structure in terms of how to approach it. And I really hope that the resources I was out outlining could massively help you and yeah. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I hope this was useful and I hope I can help you more. And this, I really want all of you to crush it. And thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day.